to my series of instructional videos demonstrating the use of the 40 pound electric furnace. I designed this furnace in 2001 and as of 2019 it's in use in over 30 countries around the world and I estimate there to be about 220 of them in use. So let's get on with it. I'm going to demonstrate the making of these dichroic swirled paperweights uh, there are four gathers and they take about five or six minutes to make. On the bottom there's the connection there from the punty. I don't bother cold working these, I glue a felt pad on the bottom. So I'll run through making one from start to finish and then I'll show some of the individual steps.
The tools I use to make the paperweights is a punty rod, which is half inch stainless steel bar stock, and I've ripped up a flannel bed sheet into strips to use for a wrap on here. So it's good to grip and it absorbs sweat. And this pickup plate is stainless steel bar stock welded together in a row and it provides a groove to hold my pieces steady while I'm picking them up and some diamond shears and some Chinese hoop scissors. And over at the bench I have a, a, a big wooden spoon that I've been using for years for a, a paperweight block and these shears that I made that are super super thin and they're actually more like a jacking and necking tool than they are a shear and uh, jacks. That's it. So I've cut these long pieces of dichro on clear from my scrap dichro and I place them on this pickup plate every second groove and I make sure that the dichro coating is face up. And then I just go along and make sure all the ends are in line. The top will be cut off anyways. All right, and this goes into the annealer for preheating. And the other preparation I do is I cut squares of compatible fusing glass, and then I cut the corners off. Because when I put this in the furnace and plunge a gather through the middle of it, these four points ride up quite high on the gather. So if, if I nip them off, then I have eight points instead of four, and they don't quite creep up as far. And here's the first gather. So for the first gather I just marver it a little bit. It's basically just the connection between glass and metal. Oh here, I'll grab it right here. There, that's how close I can hold this after taking a gather. Because this style of furnace is so nice to use. And here's the second gather. Now the second gather, I actually have to make a shape. So I'm going to draw it out a little bit and make it about three or three and a half inches long. There. So. I'm going to throw the colored piece in the furnace now. And I'm going to put a drop of water on it to break it. I find if I don't break it, then it gets a trapped air bubble underneath somewhere. And I'm going to get my dichro pieces out of the annealer. And I'm ready. And now I'll pick up the color on the third gather, like that. There's no color left behind in the furnace, it's all on the gather. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip off a bit of extra glass. and then pick up the pieces. And now I'm going to give them a, a clockwise twist.
and cut off the extra. And then I'm going to poke a hole in the end to trap an air bubble. All right, now it's ready for the final gather. So I'll start with a little bit of blocking to make the shape. Like that. This is a big wooden spoon. It's getting bigger every year because it keeps eroding. There. And then I have to start a parting line. These almost always wind up becoming bigger than I was thinking they were going to be, which is, which is okay, I don't mind that. So I just keep on necking it down more and more. Sometimes I hold it upright like this so that it starts to slump and have a flat bottom. And uh, you know, let it sit for uh, 10 seconds or so to uh, cool a little bit on the bottom. And then I'll throw it in the annealer. Alright, if you're inspired or learn something new or like what you see, then please spread the word to your glass making friends. I've completed 30 videos like this now and there's more on the way. So, until next time, have fun exploring glass.